Hey everybody, we're back after a prolonged hiatus and a very busy summer and fall. I'm bringing to you another interview I just did a little while ago with a copywriter from overseas. His name is John Williamson. He's got a great story. Uh, this interview sort of starts, uh, you know, we just had a conversation basically, very casual. And so the, the preamble to this is being recorded separately. But we just jump right into the story of where John got started in copywriting by selling his shoes and using that money to get his first clients. He'll get into the whole thing. Uh, if you're a frequent listener, I apologize for the long delay between episodes. We got a couple very excellent ones coming up. John's is the first. Dive in right now. You're going to love it. So um, I don't know if you saw that first post that I did in the group. Um, have you seen that one where I sell my shoes? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think You've I have. You've not seen the one where I sell my shoes? I don't think so. I mean, damn it. That's how I got into the business. I literally took the shoes off my feet. I sold them. I took the cash, I bought some postage stamps, I mailed 84 people, I got 12, well, I got 13 people actually, 13 people picked up the phone and rang me. Um, I did business with, well, no, I got on the phone to 12 of them, one of them just rang to say he was gonna sue me. Uh, the other 12 I got on the phone to, six of them became clients and that was it. So um, my, my entrance. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and, I don't. Think, I, I, I thought you'd seen the actual story on that one because I, I, I did that. I actually put that in the, the Halbert um, copy group. Um, Mm. One day I was just kicking my heels and, and I just thought, I'm going to tell a story because I kept reading, reading about how people were struggling to get into the business, the right. business. And I just thought, you know what? I'll just tell them straight. And, and it was like nothing. It was like, I don't know, a 50 word post with a picture of me stood there with a, with a pair of shoes and, and a hundred dollar um, sort of stick post-it note next to it. And, and I put that up and it got, I don't know, it must've been like 250, 260 in reactions, like overnight. It just went nuts. Um, and it was just telling the story about literally how I was in the life insurance business and um, I got to, I was in my mid twenties and it got to the point where in the UK they were bringing in something called financial services that, which meant you had to become um, sort of like intelligently absorbed um, in the business. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You had to take exams basically. And um, I was a salesman, not an investment advisor. That's how I'd always see myself. Salesman, not investment advisor. So, so um, that came along and uh, it didn't me. So I'd, I'd um, ejected off my business. And um, basically what I did was a sales letter. And I'd also got a call, Maximum Money in Minimum Time by Gary Halbert. And I'd seen those two books. This was in the early, early 90s, about 91. I saw those two books. I read them and I thought, this sounds like the life for me. It sounds like it could be fun. Um, but I had not done any work for a couple of months. And I, I, I sitting there literally on my arm where I was going to get the money together to launch this thing. So I literally took my really good pair of shoes. I'd pay Are you, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. So I lost you. It went dead. Yeah, I think it, uh, the internet kicked me off there. So wh where I lost you, <laughs> <laughs> internet's trying to choke me out. Uh, start. So the last thing I heard was, uh, so you took your brand new pair of shoes. Yeah. And I sold them, turned them into cash, bought some postage stamps, um, and that was it. I was in business. Wow. So you just... and and. What are the, who did you decide to target and sort of what led you to that conclusion? Well, well here's what happened. I'd, I'd picked up Dan Kennedy's book and in there, I'm pretty sure it was in there. He'd mentioned something about, you can't sell somebody a, uh, an aspirin if, you, if they haven't got a headache. And that sort of resonated with me. My <laughs> life has been, my life's been built on these tiny little cliched sayings that Auntie Robin said or, 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 or uh, Gary Halbert said, or Dan Kennedy or something like that. My whole life's been built on these things. And I heard that one thing and I went, ooh, yeah, okay, that's the secret. So if I'm gonna get myself into the business, I simply have to find people with headaches, present myself as the aspirin, better still, hit them on the side of the head with something really heavy, give them a migraine, and then present myself as super strength <laughs> aspirin, and I'm in. So basically, that's what I did. Um, and, and so I picked up the local newspaper, 
um, I was just, you know, with these free newspapers that they used to put through the doors back in the day. And I flipped it open and there's all these adverts in there from local businesses. And I figured pretty instantly that um, they were all in trouble. They were all, they were all feeling some pain. And that pain was they have just spent money on advertising. The advertising probably wasn't making them any money. Um, the bill was just about to come and they were, you know, hoping that the lifetime value of their customers was eventually going to pay off, but there was going to be in deficit with that advertising money. So all I did basically is I um, got as many newspapers as I could, free newspapers, and I cut all the adverts out and I ended up with a pile of 84 adverts. And I wrote myself a newspaper article. So uh, I wrote the article or wrote it as if it was in the newspaper and I designed it so that it was like... Um, um, you know, wider at the top and, and then one column underneath it. And then what I do is I print the newspaper article out that I'd written and the headline was something, something like a guaranteed way to boost your response rates from your advertising, something like that. Nice. And then all I did was I stuck the, um, I, I got a print stick and I stuck the advert next to my own, um, the, um, the, the article I'd written. And then I stuck it on a printer down at the local print shop, you know, the local uh, corner shop. Yep. You used to have the four cent printers type things. I went down and printed it. So now it looked like their advert, which had appeared in the newspaper, actually was wrapped around, or my uh, my article was wrapped around their advert in the newspaper. Does that make some sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. Visually. It's perfect. <clears throat> and then all I did was I folded it up, stuck it in an envelope, addressed it to the business, and that was it. I mailed them, 84 of them. Uh, like I said, 13 people rang me up. One guy rang me up to, to, to threaten to sue me basically he was saying listen you've used my advert in your promotions you know you can't do that it's copyright and then he got the newspaper on and the newspaper rang me up and said what the heck are you doing you're mailing all our advertisers with this this made up uh, article and it looks like the article appeared in the newspaper you can't do that blah 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 etc anyway they all jumped up and down and said they was going to sue me nobody did um the remaining 12 <laughs> people um six of them um six of them agreed to meet me and they became clients um so i took six clients on my first week after mailing 84 letters didn't make a single cold call they all rang me and i was in business i was in business for the first week until the end of the first week and one of the guys who took me on who i ended up doing an awful lot of business with over the next three to five years but um at the end of the first week he, he sent he sat down with me and said you've never done this before have you <laughs> and I went, no. He said, so I'm your guinea pig. And I went, mm, yeah. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. He says, I think you're going to be really good at this. You've got, obviously, you've got some creativity in your asset, but you're not using my money to get good. So go away, use everybody else's money to get good. As soon as you've got some results, come back and see me and uh, we'll pick up again. So he, I gave him his money back and uh, I, I went off and worked with the other, the other five people. Um, within the next month or two, I went back to him and showed him what I achieved for other people. And he went, this is amazing, sign me up. And that was it. We, we were working together for years after that. So, um, that's how I got into the business, 90, early 90s, 91, I think, 91, 92, something like that. And I've been doing uh, direct response stuff ever since. That's a, that's a fascinating story. That's one of the better stories I've heard uh, of all the people I've interviewed over the last five years. That's certainly selling your own shoes to get the postage to make yeah. these. I mean, that's an amazing story, John. And I know and the thing is, Dave, I hear this all the time. When, when you go into all the different <laughs> groups, the copy groups, you see everybody like, you know, how many more books do I need to read? And, you know, how many more letters do I need to handwrite? And, you know, what, they, they go on and on and on about stuff. I literally picked up Dan Kennedy's ultimate sales letter, used that as my manual for, the next, for the, that first 12 months. That's all I read. I mean, this is back in the day before the internet. There was no, you know, going right. on and reading people's blogs, ordering new books every week and all that kind of stuff. I, I got that one book in my hand and I read it to death and I used it. That's it. Finished. And I yeah, keep I saying to people to this day. Yeah, I Sorry, think that's Dave. the, no, I think that's the, no, I know you're very passionate. I love it. Uh, I think that uh, that's one of the things that really holds back. We were talking off air before we started recording. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, a credo of, uh, I think I first heard it from Gary Halbert and I know I've, reheard it from Dan Kennedy in various forms of, uh, you know, money is attracted to speed. Yeah. And so maybe talk more about that, John, because you've been coaching people, you have a group now on Facebook, uh, helping other copywriters, maybe get into like what you're seeing and this major obstacle of like, uh, inertia. Yeah, and and I think you're hundred percent right that it, it is inertia. There's a lot of people getting ready to get ready to get ready. If that makes sense. I remember walking down a high, street, a, a high street in London one day 
And, and there was a woman sat outside a coffee shop with a cigarette in one hand and a book in the other hand. And the book she was reading was something like stop, how to stop, how to stop smoking in 30 days. And she sat there with a cigarette in her hand. And I'm like, if that's not the clearest damn sign of somebody getting ready to get ready to get ready. I don't know. So, I mean, my thing is this, it's, it's relatively simple. I picked up that one. And, and to this day, and, and like since 1991, since uh, Dan Kennedy wrote that book, and I don't know when he originally wrote it, it was probably 10 years before that, but I picked up that one book that got me started to this day, to this day, the one piece of advice I give to everybody out there is pick up that one book, write yourself your own piece of sales copy to sell you and get into the business. That's it. I know there's hundreds of books come since then. I've got, I've got a library full of books since then. Um, but it's, you know, you can learn and, and relearn and keep reading and keep acquiring knowledge and all the rest of it. But there's only one real way to do this is to get that one basic book. Dan Kennedy outlines everything in that book, everything that you need to know, all about headlines, all about getting to the reader's mind. Everything's there. It's, it's basic, but it's there. And then get out into the good place and start, start, start actually doing some real stuff with, with real customers. Yeah, that, that's that, my philosophy on it. No, I think you're, you're spot on. I think there is this culture um, of getting ready to get ready to get ready, like you were saying. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of I mean it's fear, it's all those sort of normal things that people uh, encounter when they're trying to do anything. It's it's the same in copywriting. It's just a matter of actually taking some action. And you know the other thing, Dave, I think it is, and this wasn't original to me. I, I bumped into a guy a number of years ago, and he was he told me about this big mastermind he'd been to in Canada, and he sat sat next to this guy, and the guy was a billionaire, and the guy had, and this is a true story by the way. The guy the guy turned around to him and said, "Do you know why you're not as rich as me?" And the guy was called Dave, and and he and he said to him, "No, but I'm all ears. You're the billionaire, not me." So tell me, he says, "Because you don't love money enough." <laughs> And that sort of stuck with me when I heard that. It's 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 true. Most people the, the, they they don't sit down and figure out. They don't get the motive. And you know, for my group on, on on Facebook, you know, we spend an awful lot of time on the motivational side. You know, the psycho side, yes. making sure that you've got that money making mindset in place, making sure that you, you know, you're you you're not averse to making money and all that kind of stuff. And I know that sounds absolutely ludicrous that anybody should be averse to making money, but a lot of people are. They've got themselves in hamstrung with with you know all sorts of issues and, and stuff about making money so one of the things i spend quite a lot of time with people on um, particularly when i'm working on one-to-one -one basis is getting that money making mindset in place getting them eager to make money um and, and also getting them fixated on this this concept of what's your number which is not again not original to me it's something i heard gary v talk about um maybe 12 months ago something like that and, and, you know, everybody's interest, everybody wants to be a millionaire. Everybody wants to make six figures. Everybody wants to, you know, there's, there's all these things right, they, right. they want to do. They just pull out of thin air. And he talked about this concept of figure out what, what your number is. What is your number? What, what is the amount of money you need to make to, to, to lead your perfect lifestyle? And I've done an awful lot of work with people um, through the group and, and on a one-to-one -one basis with people that I'm working with directly. And you know what that number keeps coming up as? It's twenty thousand dollars a month. Right. right. Now that isn't pulled out of thin air. That's when people sit down with a piece of paper and work out what it is they want to drive, where it is they want to live, how many holidays a year they want to go on, you know, top level stuff, how much tax they're gonna to have to pay on top of whatever that is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it keeps coming out to just around twenty grand. Yeah, which is not crazy. Which ain't crazy money. That that's massively achievable. But, but but people get hung up on just like like they hang big numbers up in the air. Like they want to become a millionaire. They want to do seven figures. They want to do this, that, and the other. And and the stepping stone, the first stage for me when I'm working with people is to get them to understand that you know their millionaire lifestyle is is a lot closer than they think it is. And once they start to understand that, they get that number in place, and then they work backwards and look at the input activity required to generate the necessary number of clients or projects or whatever to generate that money, everything changes super quick. Yeah, because then you actually have, it's something tangible. It's not just like six, fig, you know, six figures and uh, ideas like that are just... Uh pixie dust or whatever you want to say yeah they are you know the the thing i teach is that the brain is is basically works on something called expectation theory um and it will only go to work on something it, it expects to be possible and to happen based on experience based on what's already happened to it so um you know when people sit down and they just pull numbers out of thin air and there's there's no there's no rationale as to why they want that amount of money the brain doesn't go to work to help you do that 
he constantly puts roadblocks and, and, and obstacles in place to keep you where you are because it doesn't believe that there's any possibility that that's actually like to happen. There's no expectation it's going to happen. Anyway, this is a completely different topic. I do a lot of work on, on mindset, a lot of work on subconscious rebooting and, and all that kind of stuff, which is not what we're here to talk about today, is it, Dave? Well, you want to get back? You want to get back on this marketing stuff? <laughs> well, I think it's no. I think this is this is a good tangent to go on because these are the things that truly are the obstacles uh, for people. I mean, it's usually not uh, the skills, the writing. You know, all that stuff will grow over time, and you'll get better the more you do of it. Of course, and uh, and you know things like coaching and stuff, of course, can help with that. Yeah. But uh, it's the mental, you know, the inner game, as they say, is a yeah. big part of why people don't get anything done, don't get to the level they wish they were at, or or don't even conceive that it's possible. Yeah, and it's huge. And and like I say, if you if you really dig into it and and do the research and the studying and the analysis and and the trialing error on it. It all gets down to this this concept of expe expectation theory and how the brain works, um, and you've got to um, create um, a sense of certainty within yourself that the input activity you're going to undertake, whatever that's going to be, is going to generate the right number of uh, clients and therefore the right level of income. And once you figure that all that stuff out and stop thinking about that big number suspended in the air, whatever it is, six figures, seven figures, whatever, but you equate it to what do I have to do tomorrow morning? Input activity wise with regard to acquiring and attaining clients, what do I have to do tomorrow morning that will make that happen? And then you focus on that one singular thing. You forget the big picture, you forget the big game, you forget the big numbers. You just go to work on that one tiny piece of input activity that's required for you to move it forward. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense, perfect sense. Now, maybe let's tackle some of the things that you get people to do. We don't want you to give away all your secrets, of course, but uh, you know, let's get into some of the ways that people are acquiring clients and, and sort of put a, 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 a real world tangible sort of picture into like the various activities and stuff people should be considering. Sure. So, I mean, again, let's not, let's not overcomplicate this. I have along the way, um, mastered a whole bunch of processes which enable me now to, to, to determine with a fairly high degree of accuracy each time what level of input activity I'm going to need to undertake to generate the output result I need. So that could be going networking. It could be using direct mail to, um, to um, acquire clients. It could be running seminars. We talked earlier about, you know, I've done an awful lot of seminars. I can't remember. I, I've spoken now over a thousand times at meetings. Now that sounds really impressive, but I'm not talking. No, I'm not talking like um, you know uh, Tony Robbins style meetings, like five thousand people in a room. I'm talking about anything from like a dozen to a couple hundred people in a room. Right. Um, they have never those those meetings have never ever ever failed to generate me business, and right. really good business. Well, and let's, let's let's tackle something then, because that's one of the things in your group that I responded to and, and was part of the uh, discussion is. Uh, let's talk about these events and all the events that you've thrown, different ways you've uh, approached them. You've given uh, free events. I'm sure you've done paid events. Let's uh, tackle into some of these getting people in a room together sure. ideas. So, so here's the deal. I have yet to do a paid event ever. Oh, well, there you go. There so, you go. So. I've yet to do a paid event. I've only ever twice put my own events on. Okay. So one was the one you saw in the group where I, where I showed people, um, you know, what a failure it was, but out of that failure, out of taking that action, massive things did actually happen, but the on the day result was, was deemed to be a failure. The second time was, um, I challenged myself to, to put an event on, I got 174 people in the room in about a couple of weeks, me and one other person. Um, and that was using my referral system. So I teach something called the borrowed name referral system. And that was just purely using the, refer the referral system to do. However, it's too much like hard work. My recommendation to people <laughs> is speak. Yes, definitely, 100%. Get on, your, get off your butt, on your feet, and speak in front of audiences. It, it's like, it, it's the best way of generating clients. It's, it's, it's a super cool way of generating clients. It's super effective. It's efficient. Um, the the take-up rate is, is, is beyond expectation. People, the sales process you have to go through afterwards is, is diminished massively once people have seen you on your, foot, on your feet in front of somebody for an hour or so. So that's massive. But what I've, what I've discovered along the way is um, always find other people's audiences. Speak, um, find other people who've already created audiences and speak in front of their audiences. So 
Um, and the best source of that, the one I found, which has worked um, best for me along the way, is um, banks. Okay, interesting. Banks have small businesses. Banks are in a competitive environment. They are desperately trying to acquire each other's customers. Anything they can do to build loyalty with the customers or to influence their customers to say, hey, my bank's really good. They look after me. They do stuff other banks don't do. They will do. And I've spoken for, um, in the UK at least anywhere, I've spoken for um, four of the major banks. Awesome. That's and in awesome. some instances, dozens and dozens of times. And here's the deal. They, they put the room on. They buy the sandwiches. They pay, the, they, they pay for the coffee. They've got an audience. They invite the audience. I walk in. I deliver my pitch. I collect all the business cards. And then generally people will reach out to me. The, the really hot ones will reach out to me afterwards and say, that was really interesting. How does that directly apply to my business? Can, can we sit down and have a chat? So is this more of like a general um, advertising principles type talk? Or yeah, I mean... Right from word go, the, the very first um, talks I was doing um, was probably about six months after I started in the business. So way back in the early 90s again. And you know what I did? The, all I did was taught the principles I'd learned in um, the Ultimate Sales Letter by Dan Kennedy. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, don't, don't complicate things. <laughs> I stood up in front of a room and I shared that stuff with people and they were amazed. They were blown away. And I was still learning on the job. I only just take my first half dozen clients and I was still getting, you know, making mistakes and, and trial and erroring and, and, and all, going through all the pain and stuff of that. Um, and all I did was teach that stuff. And then as time went on, I learned my own concepts, I learned my own ideas, I got my own pitches and stuff like that. And now I've got, I've got some pretty much some pretty cool take to the bank type processes to do it. But one of the big secrets is, is audience and um, getting in front of people as a speaker on the subject of direct response marketing is a win, a huge win. Yes. Yeah. I think it's so, uh, because I, even though we know about it, of course, and we're immersed in this niche end of the uh, marketing world, very few people actually have ever heard oh, of it. They don't. And when you, when you explain the principles and when you do it with, with some panache, and you make it interesting and exciting for them and you, you're enthusiastic, they just are blown away. They, they just can't wait to sit down with you. You know, yeah, so it, it's, it's the perfect way. And, it, and it's, it's so efficient. I mean, you get yourself in front of 20, 30, 40 people in one hour and, and it's somebody else's audience. So the trust is already there. They've already built some trust with, you know, the audience comes because their bank manager said, hey, you should come listen to this guy. He's really cool. Yeah. They, they pull those people in. So the trust is already there. There's a handshake trust already being already in place as you walk through, as they walk through that door. You know, the bank manager right. is introducing you to his client with a handshake to say, this is the speaker. Thank Great. You could come tonight. Yeah. That's, it's fantastic. Now, John, if people want to get in touch with you, they want to avail themselves of your group, your coaching, uh, where do they go? How do they get involved? Uh, I guess first step is for, everybody is to dive deep into all the free stuff we've got over at copywriting bullfighters which is a facebook group so if you just search copywriting bullfighters you won't forget that i hope um by the way that that's in homage to dan kennedy with his no bs uh, right you know, that's where the bullfighters don't think comes from so um we're very respectful of dan for uh, actually laying the road before us um but uh, yeah coming to the group we've got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of posts um I think over about 20 hours with the video content now, which are step-by-step -step guides on how to set, set up different copywriting projects and, and how to create your own marketing material and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, first aid, just get yourself over there and take uh, avail yourself of all the good stuff that's going on over there. And we've got some really, really cool people in the group, really, really helpful people who are, you know, look, looking backwards at the, the, the new generations coming through and the newbies and all that stuff and giving them a, a lift up like that, they're sticking their hands out and pulling them up. So yeah, come over to Copywriting Bullfighters. Awesome. Awesome. Well, John, it's been a hell of a pleasure having you on the show. You've dropped a lot of knowledge. I think some of the ways you've uh, outlined are unique, but simple and, and, and doable. And uh, people should be rushing out to take advantage of, of the knowledge you've uh, given here. Listen, listen back to this and take advantage right away. Cool. Okay, David, thank you ever so much for having me on today. I appreciate it. Yes. Thanks for coming on. And uh, for everybody else, we'll be back again next time, hopefully with somebody as insightful and gregarious as John Williamson. Until then.